Hello, it's Scott Manley here for another Kerbal Space Adventure. This time we are going to combine the power of the Delta V rocket system with the physics magic of the bioleptic transfer orbit to come back to the planet Kerbin faster than ever before. Now I've already demonstrated that this thing can get up to about 10 kilometers per second Delta V, so in theory we could launch and then burn straight back to the planet and get at least 10 kilometers per second, but I know I can do better than this. The plan here is to put the rocket back on a retrograde orbit with respect to the planet. And if I line everything up just right, we should encounter the planet head on with twice its orbital velocity. So you see that we've boosted the spacecraft up into a very highly eccentric orbit. I've tried to keep it as much in the plane as possible. Mechanical Jeb's instrumentation is really helping out here because it's allowing us to see the exact inclination and uh, it's also giving me a time until we reach Aphelion, which you can see at 10,000 times is going to be almost like an hour of real-time game. Harvester, if you're out there, I really want the 100,000 and a million time acceleration for these things. But yes, after a really, really, really long time, I mean, I literally went away to work and came back. I left it running at 1,000 times. I came back, got to the Aphelion, and there I start to thrust retrograde. Now you can see we have quite a decent amount of fuel left, and uh, this spacecraft is optimized for this. You can see that I'm using the little engine because uh, it doesn't need a huge amount of thrust in space because it has plenty of time to make these maneuvers. Uh, you're saving a little bit of mass there. And, and you know these empty uh, fuel tanks only have a mass of 0.2, so there's no uh, extra decouplers or anything. It doesn't make sense on paper to carry that extra budget in the initial launch. But after a long time, we uh, flip our orbit around and the, get the perihelion down to the same as that of the planet. So we're now essentially going back almost exactly the way we came. And after that maneuver is over, it's back to waiting a really, really, really long time. At this point, I believe I left the computer running on 10,000 times acceleration and went and read the kids a couple of chapters of Harry Potter. During this time, I believe Sky informed Orion that it was okay, Harry Potter wasn't going to die because apparently there's more than three books in the series. But as you can see, we come back and we're pretty close to the orbit. We uh, unfortunately didn't time this quite right, so that we just missed the planet. But that's fine, we'll put ourselves into a circular orbit, so we kill all our orbital velocity, bring, try to bring this down into a perfectly circular orbit, and uh, hopefully we can make some uh, nice fast passes on the planet. Anyway, it turns out that my math is pretty good, and uh, we've managed to come down. We have the barest sliver of fuel left, Hopefully that's enough to make corrections and uh, get ourselves to return to, to the planet. And now, yeah, at this point, we're really trying to correct the orbit and get it as close to the planet uh, as possible. And uh, this is kind of hard because as you zoom in, you want to be zoomed right in to see how close the orbits are together. But as you zoom in, it decides to fade the orbits out. So you're kind of playing this game of tag with the orbit where you zoom out so you can see it and then zoom back in really quickly and try to line them up a little and you make some thrust. Uh, I took three or four attempts to get this right. The first time, I flew past and I was nowhere near. The second time, I did a little better. Not so bad. And yeah, the third time, third time I went in and I corrected the inclination as low as possible and when I entered the planet's sphere of influence bang I was there with like a 17 kilometer perigee it's like the perfect altitude if we're too high up we would skip off the atmosphere and go back into deep space if we're too low down it's entirely possible that this spacecraft will break up so I was like you know, gobsmacked to get this right. So I saved the position because I want to try the, the crashing and the skipping off routines later. So yeah, here we are. We're coming in at about 19 kilometers per second over the South Pole. Uh, the poles are a new thing. I hadn't seen those before. They look pretty awesome. Uh, what looks really awesome is how fast this moves. This is not like accelerated or anything. This is how fast 19 kilometers per second looks. Previously, if you wanted to return to the planet at this kind of speed, you probably needed to cheat your parts or something. 
But this is much more restricted. You know, if you can get about 8 kilometers de per second delta V, then in theory you can come down in this orbit. If you get the timing right, you can get even above 20 kilometers per second. That would be a real challenge. And so, yeah, a successful uh, speed record for the Kerbinauts. So let's time skip this back, because, you know, we can use saved games now. Let's uh, try to go into the atmosphere as deep as possible and see if things will break up. Yep, again, this looks really fast. We're descending through the atmosphere at incredible rate, and we're going to get very low. So I detach the pod and smash to smash into my upper stage. Okay. Well, the spacecraft didn't get destroyed by re-entry, despite traveling faster and deeper and harder than uh, any rocket has ever done. But uh, yeah, I don't think I can get any steeper descent than that, so let's uh, try uh, skipping off the atmosphere. What I really want to try doing here is to skip the pod, uh, have the pod go lower than the rest of the rocket, so that the upper stage skips out of the atmosphere and the pod returns home. Unfortunately, I kind of messed this up and they both skip through the atmosphere and come out at a, quite an alarming clip. In fact, uh, turns out that this these things will uh, skip through uh, out the other side of the sphere of influence. They're going so fast, there's going to be no capture here. And, uh, well, turns out that uh, about 9 kilometers per second velocity relative to Kerbin uh, is enough to put them on a sun-grazing trajectory again. So, uh, yeah, this is the most obtuse uh, sun-diving maneuver ever, I imagine. I uh, kind of messed up because I wanted to go as fast as possible through the atmosphere and you know, try to get them detached. So, yeah, I get no fuel left. So, the chances of them coming home largely depend on whether they arrive at the planet at the right time in the future. And at 10,000 times speed up, I'm not going to wait around for that. So far now, the, these pilots' ultimate fate shall remain a mystery. So anyway, that's all I've got for you this time. Uh, see you around next time, maybe with more rocket stunts or some EVE stuff. Who knows? Uh, see you later. Fly safe.